Hey guys, it's Bart Hansen here for Crush Live Poker once again. And today I'm going to do another sample, little sample of some 08 material. I put up an entire PL08 training video last month. And today what I'm going to do is put up part of the video that came out this month. If you go over to Crush Live Poker and you go to videos and you click on Crush Live 08, you will see that we've done 70 videos now and uh, if you play limit 08 i did a low stakes game with a kill from uh king's club online that was the entire video and in this sample we're going to look at some intricate spots even though you sort of think about like a low stakes game being you know kind of nut pedally but game got a little bit short-handed and if you want to look at some pretty advanced spots in terms of reading the board, reading some complex lows. Uh, take a look. Again, you can get 37 days for free to Crush Live Poker by using the coupon code CLO8. So here, again, playing shorthanded, ace-king-8-7. That's going to be the bottom part of my opening range. And I flop top two. So once again, this is just going to be a spot where the board is textured. I've got basically the equivalent to the nut high now, so I'm going to continue to bet while I have what I equivalent to the nut high. So I bet this guy calls, this guy calls, and obviously things are going to change here. Now, if the turn is an offsuit uh, queen jack, queen or jack, where 10 would bring in the 8-9, I will probably continue to bet and then just take a showdown. This guy check raises. So when he check raises, that normally would indicate... When I block top, you know, sets of kings and sets of sevens, occasionally he could have a set, but, you know, this could be like a not a flush draw and a, you know, uncomfortable nut low draw, although he did just call in the big blind, whereas if I was in the spot with a hand like ace, deuce, and nut hearts, I would be three betting prey. But these guys play passively. So this gets sticky. I can't fold now, obviously, but um, if a low heart were to come, I would fold. And actually, what I end up doing is three betting. This is kind of an advanced play. I wanted to drive this guy out of the hand because um, I did not want like a low heart sticking around if somebody, or a straight draw or something like that. This hand is going to do much better in this particular spot, heads up as opposed to three way. So I wanted to three bet this check raise. Now, I could get jammed on here for sure. It's not a play that I'm going to necessarily make every day. But I'm trying to drive this guy out of the hand. He calls. And now this guy caps it. And I'm like, fuck. Right? Okay, offsuit jack. So now the pot's 70 bucks. And again, this guy's either going to have like a monster sort of made hand here or a monster draw. And now... After we cap, he checks. So when he checks, now basically I know that he's got, you know, the low draw, flush draw, and kind of straight draw. I continue to probably have the best high hand here. So even against that and against two people, I can get value here by betting. I'm not going to get double check raised here. So it goes call, call. And I know I have the best hand here now, right now. But obviously there's a ton of turn cards excuse me, there's a ton of river cards that are going to, that obviously can, can beat me or that are going to be sticky because of the straight draws, right? Like any card basically between a 10 down to a three, it's going to fill a straight. And then any heart would also suck. And occasionally like a queen or a 10, somebody's going to back into Broadway. What's interesting is an offsuit deuce. This is where the expert stuff comes into play. If an offsuit deuce comes... Um, especially when it changes the nut low draw and it become, ace three comes to the nuts and it were to get checked to me, let's say it's the deuce of clubs at the end, I would bet king seven for value, especially against two people. Absolutely, I would bet for value. And I might actually get two calls. And again, occasionally you might value own yourself. So we rolled the river. Okay, and this is this sort of a similar scenario. This is kind of similar to a deuce in the sense that it changes what was the nut low draw. So now the nut low is deuce three. And um, it does fill queen 10, but the flop doesn't really interact with queen 10. So unless someone had queen 10 as 
a flush draw or had it as their side cards with a flush draw, probably we're not going to see a whole lot of queen 10. So if we don't see a whole lot of queen 10, what does that mean? It means that we still have a high hand here with ace king as the nut. So if it got checked to us, I would bet just like I would bet any set. So I'm going to bet here if checked to. Now, occasionally we can get fucked and we can get check raised, we can get scooped the whole thing, but people usually aren't that sophisticated. And obviously if someone comes out and bets, I'm just going to call. So it gets checked over to me and uh, I'm going to bet. You know, I'm definitely going to bet here. So I bet. And, you know, I'm expecting that if somebody calls, we're going to chop and I'm hoping for two calls. Okay, this guy folds out. And unbelievably, this is an unbelievable surprise, I scoop this hand. Crazy. I scoop the hand here because this guy calls with a7 and he had the nut flush draw, a pair of sevens. You can see like if a 10 came, he would have had a straight. So nut flush draw, a pair of sevens. He, 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 he capped it pre. He capped it on the flop, which is... I guess maybe okay. I mean, in hold them, it would be okay, but he doesn't have a low draw. Then he decides to check the turn. I continue to bet the turn. And now the river, he makes aces and sevens, and he misses his flush, and he calls me down with aces and sevens, which is quite amazing. And I scooped the entire pot, which was quite nice. All right, two more hands here. This is going to be a very, very intricate little advanced spot in terms of reading what is a low and what is a free roll bet. So again, as you can see, several people sort of sitting, or one people, it's more down to like five-handed now. This guy completes in the small blind, and obviously I just check king, six, deuce, deuce, garbage. And I'm basically just done with the hand here as I flop a pair of sixes, and I have a live deuce draw. Check, check. Okay, now turns an ace. So now I have a low. I have a live deuce, right? And we talked about the quality of live lows on how different boards, like a live low on a six high board is almost the nuts, right? A live ace on a six high board is basically going to be the second nuts behind a wheel. But a live low on an eight high board is shit. It's like the 10th nuts because 3-4 beats you, 3-7 beats, you know, a seven low basically beats you, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, it really depends on the, on what the board is. So the pot is now 760 and this guy now checks and I decided to bet because at this point I thought that it was probably pretty hard for me not to be winning at least one way. Now I know that looks weird. I'm like, Bart, you only have a, a pair of sixes and a live deuce. But if you look at this, he completes and goes check, check, checks the flop, turns an ace. What are the lows that beat a live deuce? We just said like 7-4, which is a straight. So 7-4 is not going to play it this way, right? Because flop straight, turn. 7-3, right? 7-4, 7-3. 7-3 also, too, would be, you know, I think a hand that would probably come out and bet. Gut shot now with a low. 7-deuce, right? 3-4. So we're going down the line and deuce four. So I think that we think that three, four would probably bet either the flop or the turn. Dip twos, four, def, you know, at, with some pair, definitely going to bet. And then just seven deuce. The point that I'm making here is, is that I think it's very hard for him to have a better low than me and a better high than me right now. And if I can just get him to fold, I'll just get him to fold. Because how is he, any of those hands that I just, said with an ace in it is going to bet at some point, whether it's a raise preflop, flop bet, turn bet. Just once in a while, maybe he's got a hand like 8-7 deuce. I don't know, 10-8-7 deuce. So 10-8-7 deuce right now is beating me, but I have two deuces in my hand. So you, you can see what I'm talking about here. So I bet he calls. And now, so at this point, like, you know, if the river was some brick, I would, it would just, I, at this point, I would just go check, check. I don't, I don't think that I would bet at the end. You know, if the river was like a 10, because I can just, I'll accidentally lose. Now, if the river like, uh, yeah, but even if the river paired the five, it, it's just very, I'm, I'm probably not going to bet at the end unless I improve. Okay. 
But the three now does improve me. Because now I've, I still have a live deuce, but now that the three comes, the live deuce turns from like the, whatever I said, the 10th not low to now the second not low, right? What's my low? Well, I've got six deuce in my hand and I play ace three, five on board. The, the, my low is ace, deuce, three, five, six. The only thing that's better than my, than that is, uh, is a wheel right? A live deuce here is the second nut low on ace, three, five, six, right? It's the second nut low. Um, so, you know, because the, the low is ace, deuce, three, five, six. So I improve my low. So he checks and this becomes a bet now. And again, it, it could be a, one of these weird, weird situations where a guy doesn't quite understand because, again, these situations where there's a board with all five cards that are below an eight, it can be very, very complicated for people because you can get into situations where you can have four pair, like say, for example, somebody had ace, eight, five, six in their hand. They would have a low. What low would they have? They wouldn't have a low on the turn, but they'd have a low on the river. And what would the what would the low be? It would be board low, playing the board for low. And the reason why they would call it board low is because their low is actually what's on the board. If someone had ace eight five six in their hand, their low would be ace three five six eight. However, t whatever two cards you want to use from their hand and three on the board, they can do it with the five cards that are unpaired below an eight. And uh, but here a live deuce. Second, not low. So this becomes, I think, like a free roll bet. Like I said, I would have checked behind on any other card. But now I've got a live deuce, and uh, I bet. And he calls. And you can see here that on the turn, he had three pair. And he had a gut shot to a seven. So he checked the flop with top and bottom and a gutter to a seven. He checked the turn. So on the turn, with my live deuce... I'm actually free rolling him. There's no way that he can win the low. He can't have a better low than me. So I'm actually free rolling him where if a six were to come off, I would win. He's got aces and eights, so I need a six. A six were to come off, I would win with trip sixes and a live deuce. If a deuce were to come off, that would be interesting. If a deuce were to come off and the board was eight, five, six, ace, deuce, we would have this situation where I would have a board low, right? The board is ace, five, six, eight, deuce. I have deuce six in my hand. Pretend this is a deuce here. I would have a board low. He would also have a board low. So if a deuce comes at the end, he plays board low, I play board low, but I win with three deuces for high, I get three quarters. So I'm free rolling him, if a six comes, I scoop, a deuce comes, I get three quarters. Those are the only things that really can change with this hand. He plays board low now, actually. He plays board low. He doesn't actually have to have, I said, what if he has four pair? He's got three pair. He's got a board low here. He's got aces and eights and a board low. He had three pair on the turn, now on the river, this his low is ace, three, five, six, eight, right? Whatever combination you want to use. My low is live deuce. But he's got aces and eights for high. So that's a, the sort of the complicated nature of when there's five cards that are below, you know, an eight out there. And then finally, the last hand that we want to take a look at here. What the heck? All right, last hand here. It's going to show you a little bit about sometimes trying to raise people out. Kind of a little bit similar to that hand where I tried to raise the guy with the king seven. So we've got ace seven six four here on the button. This is not a this is a hand that I would not play from up front. No suited ace. So I'm just going to over limp it here. Definitely like the sort of the bottom part of playability. Uh, and probably just a fold really from up front. So I call. So we're going to see this one, two, three, four, five ways. 
So this is what I'm talking about with like sort of understanding, you know, this comes with experience, understanding post-flop, trying to see what you're going to do. So here I have a very interesting hand that definitely benefits from getting heads up and getting more shorthanded. I've got a two-way hand here, but it's not really all that. I've got a two-way hand and a couple of draw. I mean, I've got a two-way hand and some draws that aren't super powerful, but definitely would be powerful enough to take up against one player. I flop top and bottom here with a six high flush draw and a four six low draw. So I've got sort of a shitty flush draw and not the best low draw. I've got top and bottom. So with that, ideally what I would actually like to have happen is somebody bet so I can raise or it gets checked to me. It's much, much worse if, for example, this guy bet and it went call, call. I would still probably hang around, but I'd have to hang around with caution and be very, very um, prepared to fold on the turn. But um, even to the point where if it went, if it, if like, say, for example, this guy bet and then there was a raise, I would just fold my hand. But if somebody bets, I can raise to try to get a heads up. <clears throat> that's really what the difference is between this hand. And that's what's going to happen here, actually. It's going to get checked over to this guy, Mr. Poopy here, a tight whale. So he's going to bet and I'm going to raise. You know, recognizing the situation, not great draw, but top and bottom, got three people, let's drag people out. So I make a raise here. And I think that that's definitely the right play. So it's really an extreme situation where you could get bet and several calls or a raise, you might fold. But here you're going to raise against the late position bet. And there we go. I drove everybody out. Calling here would be, I think, very, very bad when this guy bets just to call. The hand just benefits so much from driving these people out. Got the ace of spades in our hand here too. Turn is the queen of spades. Now what kind of bet, again, this was limped around. What kind of bet does this represent on the flop? Normally it's probably gonna be a low draw and a club draw or an ace and a low draw. I guess it could be like top two. This turn card is probably pretty close, but I think that I will bet and what betting will accomplish, especially if I don't get check raised here all that much, is that I'll get to, I'll most of the time, get to see what I want to do on the river. I can just check it back or bet. Whereas if I check this back, I don't really get the decision on the river. I mean, he might check, but he might bet too. I know it's just one bet, but I might want to go bet bet here. You know, if like the three of clubs comes or something like that, or an ace or a seven for that matter. So this is why I'm going to err towards betting. And, you know, you have to be wary in higher stakes when people are capable of check raising draws and check raising, you know, they're probably going to check raise King 10. Um, so I bet and he calls. Now the river is a six. So that's actually not a great card for us because we don't make a low with our aces and sevens. Like if the river was a three or a deuce, I think that we definitely have a bet at the end, you know, especially a deuce. Why is a deuce better than the three? The reason why a deuce is better than the three is because then it would counterfeit deuce three or deuce four. And if a deuce comes, we've got a four, six low. We could actually scoop the entire pot with a deuce. If a three comes, Actually, I guess a three, if he had the nut low, he might get counterfeit too. So a deuce or a three are good cards for us at the end with aces and sevens and a six, four low. It improves our low. But now that a six comes, it doesn't really improve our hand. I mean, we've made three pair and we don't have a low now at all. So this is a situation here where it's basically, if he checks, this is going to be a check back because we're not going to be able to get called and be good both ways or really ever. Well, we don't have a low. We can't get called here and scoop because we would have to get called by a hand that's worse than a seven and no low. And that would be almost impossible really to do. And we were going to value on ourselves against like ace jack. So this becomes just a check here. But like I said, if we improve to a low, I'm trying to think of the other cards besides a deuce or a three. Like if a five were to come or an eight, let's say a five. So if a five comes here, we've got aces and sevens and six, four. I mean, if a five comes, it doesn't bring in a straight, any checked. Yeah, I would probably bet, but we, it's going to be a chop like 99% of the time. 
you know, we really wanted to have a deuce or a three. I don't remember what this guy has. Let's see what he's going to reveal. So I am going to check this back because it doesn't make sense to bet here. And let's see what he has. Let's see if I read it correctly. Okay, he's got eight, eight, deuce, three. Right. So he's got, he had low flush. He had a low flush draw. And um, the net low. And that's why, like I said, a deuce or a three would have been, a, and by the way, I continued to bet turn and I got value, but if a deuce or a three would have been a really good card at the end, it would have scooped for us. So obviously he's got the nut low. He's just check calling, but um, yeah, I mean, that's that. And that's how you drive the other people out. Like if I had just called this guy's bet and then the other people had come in, it's a very, very good chance a seven's not going to be the best hand by the end whether someone's got ace queen or king 10 or whatever it is uh it's a very good chance it's not going to happen so anyways guys that's going to wrap it up for us this week we'll see you next month thank you very much for being subscribers and we'll see you next time bye-bye